Brand new early voting numbers suggest that Donald Trump is experiencing a surge everywhere. What is up, uh, people of the internet? It is me, Real American, back in with a new video, and I hope everyone is having a great day. I'm certainly having a great day myself. And before we continue, make sure to like, subscribe, share with your friends, hit that little bell. Also consider joining the channel today for just a dollar a month. Again, these are all great ways to support the daily content, but enough of the promotional stuff. Let's get into it because we have brand new early voting data, and it is bad for Democrats. Like, I'm not exaggerating when I say... We have officially reached DEFCON 1 territory for Dems. It is that bad. Because it's not just one state or one county that's looking bad for Democrats. No. In nearly every single state, whether it's a Republican state, a swing state, even some Democrat states, they are a complete disaster for Democrats. Now, that doesn't mean that Republicans will win every single state. It just means right now, Republicans are overperforming, while Democrats, they are underperforming by a lot. Just look at this. We have updated numbers out of Wisconsin. You know, a must-win state for both campaigns. This is a state that if Trump wins, he's probably going to win. If Harris wins, she's probably going to win the presidency. Vice versa. Right now, the biggest increases in turnout are from Republican areas. Look at this. Waukesha County, the biggest county for Republicans in Wisconsin, compared to 2022, turnout is up by 112%. That is not a misquote. Waukesha County, the biggest county for Republicans in Wisconsin, has gone up 112%. Look at Washington County, the most Republican state in the county. It went up 167%. Brown County, a very Republican area, that's Green Bay, it went up 88%. These are three Republican strongholds, especially Washington and Waukesha, that are having the biggest increases in turnout. Compare that to Dane County, to Milwaukee. Yeah, they went up like Dane County, they went up 66%. That's Madison, you know, that's not bad. But 66% compared to 112%, 167%, even 88%, that's not that good. That is a big underperformance by Democrats. Even Milwaukee, which is the biggest county in Wisconsin, right now, Democrats have only seen an increase of 74% out of Milwaukee. That is not good for Democrats whatsoever. That is a disaster because it's not just Democrats are underperforming. It's the fact that the Republican parts of Wisconsin, especially Washington County, which is the most Republican county in Wisconsin, right now, is having the biggest increase in turnout. That is awful. That is DEFCON 1 for Democrats. But fine, it could be a fluke. Maybe Wisconsin is just a fluke for Republicans. Guess what? It's not. And you could argue, compared to the other states with early voting, this is actually good news for Democrats. Yes, I said that. A big increase out of the Republican parts of Wisconsin it could be the best news for Democrats because you could argue maybe these voters are just Harris supporters that are voting early because we don't know who these people technically are. Like, yeah, they're from Waukesha, but we don't have voter registration in Wisconsin. We have no clue if these are Republicans, if these are Democrats, who knows? But more than likely, these voters out of Washington, which is like 75% Republican, they're more than likely Trump voters. And you can clearly tell that the areas that are more Trumpy are having the biggest increases in turnout. But fine, maybe Wisconsin is a fluke. Well, let's look at Pennsylvania. You know, what everyone agrees is the most important state. Like, Wisconsin's critical, but whoever wins Pennsylvania, they're winning. No matter what happens with Wisconsin or Michigan, if Trump wins Pennsylvania, he's got the presidency. And you look at the early voting, and by some miracle, it's even worse for Democrats than compared to Wisconsin. Look at this. Right now, out of Pennsylvania, it is 31% Republican and not even 59% Democrat in the early vote. Compare that to 2020 or even 2022. Democrats back in 2020, they led the early vote with roughly 65% in 2022. It was just below 69%. Now, 
It's below 59%, and it's going down every single day. Look at this trend. Every day, Democrats go down, while Republicans, they keep going up and up and up. Just a week ago, it was 63% Democrat and 27% Republican. Now, it's 31% Republican and 58% Democrat. That's not a misquote. That's not a typo. That's where the trends are out of Pennsylvania. It's not just Republicans are overperforming. It's the fact that there's a trend here. There is a clear and consistent trend against Democrats. It's not just Republicans had one really good day and that's why they're surging. No, every single day they keep going up and up and up. There's a chance by the end of early voting, Democrats don't even crack. 56% of the early vote. And Republicans are probably at 33%. Is that a guarantee? No. But if things continue the way they are trending, there's a chance that instead of leading the early vote by like 42 points, 48 points like they did back in 22 and 2020, they could be winning the early vote by maybe 22%. That's a 20-point shift in early voting out of Pennsylvania. And we know for a fact that these people are either Republicans or Democrats because guess what? They are registered Republicans or Democrats. Now, is it possible that these people are just actually old Harris voters voting early? I guess, but do you really think that these voters that are Republicans, they're, they're going to vote for Harris by a large margin? Really? Is it possible a chunk of them are like Liz Cheney types? Yeah, I could see that. But the problem is, a bunch of these voters, they're brand new Republicans. These are people that became Republicans like two weeks ago. So why would someone be, register as a Republican, decide, you know what, I'm going to vote against the orange man. Why? Why would that make any sense whatsoever? It doesn't. These people, most of them at least, are going to vote for Trump. And we can keep going. Look at North Carolina. Right now in North Carolina, Republicans lead the early vote by a point. Back in 2020, Democrats led early voting by six. In 2022, they were up by seven. Right now, Republicans are up by a point. Now, with North Carolina, you're not seeing the same trends where Republicans gain every single day. It's one of the states where some days Democrats, they do bounce back a little bit. But the problem is, even if they have a swing of like two to three points Democrat, all right? Let, let's just say Democrats surge in early voting in North Carolina. They need like an eight to 10 point shift out of North Carolina in one week. I'm, I'm, that's not a mistake. One week to, by some miracle, get to 2022 early voting, margin wise. Is that going to happen? No. Is it possible? I, I guess anything's possible, but... More than likely, we're going to see a six to seven point shift against Democrats in early voting out of North Carolina. I just don't see how a 10 point shift occurs in one week. If this was the beginning of October and Democrats were down by like one, okay, fine. There's a month to go to election day. I guess that's a possibility, but it's not early October. We are in late October. We are a couple days away from election day. And they need a 10-point shift in just one week. Same thing in Pennsylvania. They need like a, not a 10-point shift. They need a 20-point shift in Pennsylvania in one week, which is not going to happen. Just, just look at the requests. The requests out of Pennsylvania for absentee ballots have gotten more Republican. So do you really think that with how the trends are looking in North Carolina or Pennsylvania, that we're going to see a 10 to 20 point shift in early voting? I, I highly doubt it. I just don't see how Democrats recover. There's not enough time. If this was the middle of September or even late September, early October, you could argue there's still time, but we're not in the middle of October even. We are in late October, one week from election day, and they need a 10 to 20 point shift out of North Carolina, out of Pennsylvania, out of Wisconsin, and even then, let's just keep going. Nevada. Brand new numbers out of Nevada. And right now, Republicans are killing Democrats here. Yeah. Right now, Republicans lead the early vote out of Nevada by roughly 
30,000 votes. For those that don't know, Democrats in Nevada every single year, especially this cycle, they were banking on having a huge lead in the early vote. Not only do they not have a huge lead in early voting, they're actually losing the early voting in Nevada. Just look at Clark County. Clark County is Las Vegas. This is where Democrats every year bank on having a huge margin of victory. They'll barely win Nevada. Right now, Democrats are beating Republicans in Clark County by only 4,000 votes. That's not a misquote. That's not a typo. As of now, Democrats are outvoting Republicans in Clark County by not even 4,000 votes. Clark County, voter registration-wise, there are 100,000 more Democrats than Republicans in Clark. Yet right now, they are barely winning the early vote. Barely. Which is not what they wanted. In fact, they wanted like some firewall of like 50,000 votes out of Clark alone. Yet they're barely up by 4,000 votes. Ignore the statewide margin. Everyone was saying that they were going to win Nevada because the early vote out of Clark itself was to be so Democrat that they were going to win easily. They can't even win Clark County. I guess they are, but it's by 4,000 votes. They were expected to win the early vote in Nevada or Clark County by 40 or 50,000 votes. It's not happening. And now you have John Rolston, who is the expert of Nevada politics, but also a Democrat. He put up this tweet just today. Nevada vote update. 6,000 mail loaded overnight in Clark. Dems plus 1,000. GOP statewide lead of 32,000. Just under 5%. More later on the blog. Now, on paper, this doesn't seem like a big deal. Like, okay, he's saying the Republicans are up by 32,000 statewide. Why is this a big deal? Well, do you notice the tone of this tweet? It just sounds like a very defeatist tweet from a Democrat. Like, oh yeah... Republicans are up by 32,000 votes statewide. Democrats are barely gaining even in Clark. And not only that, like two hours after he posted that tweet, he posted this. On this date in 2014, the 11th day of early voting, Republicans extended a statewide ballot lead to 20,000 votes. It signaled a broad and deep red wave that would net the GOP control of Carson City and more. Yeah, he posted this two hours after this update. Not even. Like, exactly two hours after the fact. He's basically saying that, yeah, um, we're probably screwed in Nevada. He's not willing to admit it because he's a partisan Democrat, but if he says that Nevada's going to vote Republican or Democrat, you better listen to him. And right now, he is basically admitting, not directly, but indirectly saying, yeah, um, Republicans, they're going to win Nevada. They have a huge lead in early voting, and... Yeah, Democrats are gaining out of Clark, but it's not enough. I mean, this is not good for Democrats if John Rolston is saying this stuff. It's not coming from me. This is right from John Rolston, the expert of Nevada politics. If he says that so the states could go Republican or Democrat, you better listen to him. He might be a partisan Democrat, but at the bare minimum, he gets things right. But even he is starting to basically say that, yeah, it's over for us in Nevada. We're not going to win here. Now, does this mean that for sure Trump's going to win Nevada or Pennsylvania or any of those other states? No. But it just means right now that even Democrats like Rolston are starting to realize that, oh, yeah, uh, we're in deep shit. There's no surge in early voting like we were expecting. It's a complete disaster. We are getting crushed. And it's, it's looking real bad for us. That's basically what he's saying here. He's not directly admitting it, but the fact that he's posting stuff like this, it makes you really think that he believes that they're not going to win Nevada. And you pile on the fact that they're getting crushed in Pennsylvania, in Nevada, in Wisconsin, North Carolina, even Michigan. Yeah, Democrats have a big problem out of Michigan. Now, just like Wisconsin, we don't have voter registration by party, so we don't technically know if someone's a... Republican or a Democrat, but what we can look at is what counties are voting. Like, okay, is Wayne County showing up to vote? Is Macomb County voting? You know, what what counties are actually turning out? And how do they vote back in 2020? Well, right now, the Republican parts of Michigan are voting. And by a lot. They are not just voting by a small margin. No, they're up right now over the strong Democrat counties by 7.5%. 
in the early vote. And every single date, just like Mich uh, Pennsylvania, just like North Carolina, Nevada, Florida, every other swing state, Republicans are gaining every single day. Th again, we don't know for sure if these people are Democrats, Republicans. I get that. But if a voter from the Republican parts of Michigan are voting, more than likely that voter is a Republican. More than likely. Same thing with Wayne County being Democrats. More than likely. So it's not perfect, but we have a good understanding as to who's voting roughly. And right now, it's not looking good for Democrats. In fact, it's getting worse every single day for the Democrat Party. In Michigan, in Pennsylvania, in Wisconsin, everywhere. There's not a single state that right now looks good for Democrats. Even California. The early voting in California is a disaster for Dems. That doesn't mean Trump's going to win California or come close to it. But if they're struggling in California, a Democrat state, what do you think's happening in Michigan, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, even states like Virginia or Minnesota, which the early voting in Virginia does not look good for Democrats whatsoever. We'll see what happens next week, but right now, these are disastrous numbers for the Democrat Party. Anyways, folks, thank you so much for watching. If you guys did enjoy this video, smash the like button down below, subscribe, share with your friends, hit that little bell, follow the social media accounts in the description down below, and of course, join the channel today. Godspeed to all of you.